Hi, welcome to update number 11 on the Lackawanna cutoff. Congress passes the infrastructure bill. Hi, I'm Chuck Walsh and this is a big deal. And what we're gonna talk about here today is what are the implications for the passage and well, the president will be signing that bill into law maybe even as we speak here, but in, in that sense, this is a done deal. Now, the question is, is New York City to Scranton service a done deal? Well, it's getting there, let's put it that way. And what I'm gonna do is talk and try to break it down for you as best I can in terms of what information we have. I'll try not to speculate too much, but there, I'll try not to go too far out on the limb but I'll try to at least make sense of what we know at this point. What we know is that $66 billion has now been, or will it in the very, very, very immediate future be shunted to Amtrak. Now that's spread over actually a number of years, but the thing is that Amtrak has shown more than just a slight interest in this particular project, the New York City to Scranton, service. Now, if you've been following the channel, you would know that this has been a very, very long process, over 30 years. And, but at this point, this is the first time we've ever had funding that was potentially available to do this project beyond Andover, because that's a separate project in and of itself, the New Jersey Transit Service from Port Morris to Andover, seven and a half miles. But the rest of the project has never been funded until now, and or at least potentially until now. So let's talk about not so much Andover, New Jersey Transit saying about a year from now to start up their Roseville Tunnel work, which would be a two-year project. So presumably that could be done and the rest of the work be done at the end of 2024. What about the rest of this? Well, let's talk about Pennsylvania first. It's 60 miles from Slateford Junction, which is just down about a mile down the road here, here in Pennsylvania, 60 miles from Slateford Junction to Scranton. We know, and this is what we definitely know, that Amtrak and the rail authority here in Pennsylvania are already under discussions about what is here, in other words, the, what track is here, what upgrades may need to be made, and all that kind of stuff. In New Jersey, it's perhaps just a little bit more complicated because there's a 20, 20 21 mile stretch of right of way, including the, the viaduct here, the Delaware River viaduct behind me, that doesn't have any track on it. So we know that that's a project that has to be done. You have to get track. And that's, that's really, in a sense, the biggest project of all that needs to be done. The right-of-way is owned by the New Jersey Department of Transportation. As a result, we anticipate, and once again, this is we're entering the realm of speculation, I would say, that Amtrak would take on the responsibility of rebuilding the rail line, including this viaduct and the viaduct over the, the Pollens Kill a few miles east of here, and that that would be, be under their auspices, if you will. Uh, to what extent New Jersey Trans would be involved, that we don't know, but uh, there may be some expertise that they may lend, but I think that, that primarily, at least in my opinion, is probably going to be primarily an Amtrak project. And then east of Port Morris is all New Jersey Transit until you get, until you hit Amtrak, because there's actually a few miles be, between New York Penn Station and the connection with the Morristown line uh, that is Amtrak. So this entire 135 whatever mile right of way is all publicly owned, which is something that gives it a, a, a major advantage. There are 39 projects that Amtrak has identified that it wants to do over a certain period of time. We don't know exactly, 2035, I guess is what they've said, but 
which is roughly 15 years, but all 39 projects are not equal in terms of how, I'll say, easily they could be done. Yes, there are things that have to be done with this. Putting down track is, you know, it, it potentially costly, and, and of course, um, the rehabilitation of the, the viaducts will be significant. But the advantage that this particular project has is that it's one of only two projects of the 39 where there is no freight railroad involved, a, a privately owned freight railroad, let's put it that way, because on this side there is a freight railroad, but it is operated under contract underneath the Pennsylvania Northeastern Regional Railroad Authority, the railroad authority I referred to. So the, the rail authority, that's, this is publicly owned over here, it's publicly owned over there. So then the big question is, well, how long will this take? Will it happen? Well, uh, that, maybe that's even the bigger question. Will it happen and how long will it take? Uh, well, I know from personal experience, when I was interviewed by Chris Jansing from NBC News back in July of this year, 2021, that that video was delayed for a few days because Steve Gardner, the president of Amtrak wanted to be interviewed for the same video and uh, which was well known that it was going to be about the Scranton service. Talking about Amtrak but it was really centering on Scranton service. In addition, Mr. Gardner and his, his boss, Mr. Flynn, who is the uh, CEO of, of Amtrak, both appeared with the president in Scranton a few weeks ago pretty much highlighting this particular project, maybe not in so many words, but the actions speak louder than words in many ways, and their presence in Scranton, I think, spoke volumes. And they were also quoted with sounding very supportive of the project. So all this together gives us a very strong feeling that there is support to do this project, above and beyond the political support which we've gotten, and which we want to thank uh, members of Congress who have supported this this particular project uh, and all the people at different levels over the past 30 or more years actually if you want to look at it maybe even 40 years it's actually 40 we're coming up on the 42nd anniversary of the Amtrak run over the cutoff here that was originally planned as a way of bringing Amtrak in back in 1979 fast forward to 2021 here we are again with Amtrak Finally, how long? How long could it take? Best case scenario. Well, Amtrak has said a minimum of three years. Well, that would be 2024, end of 2024, if you take it literally. I'm not going to speak to whether that's possible. That's ambitious. I think that's pretty clear. Could it be 2024? Could it be substantially done by 2024? potentially. Could they run a train over the line in 2024? I, I don't know. And that's there's a lot of work to be done. And it, is, it isn't like they can necessarily start construction tomorrow. Let's be realistic. Nevertheless, let's see. Let's see what Amtrak says. I think that's something we have to look for now. We're going to have to watch Amtrak very closely. What do they say about this project? How does it get prioritized? Does it, how does it get mentioned? Uh, is there a a uh, deadline that they establish, that's, that's, at this point, we don't know. We don't know how they're going to handle this. This is uncharted territory for us in many ways. Uh, although this is uncharted territory we very much wanted to be in. So it's not as if we're unhappy about that. It's just that, you know, we're just going to wait and see. The ball is, uh, uh, you, I guess you would say, in Amtrak's court. So is this a done deal? It's, it, it's moved significantly closer to that being a done deal. Uh, when I say it's a done deal, it'll be a done deal. But right now, we, we definitely are in a good place. Uh, let's see how things happen over the coming weeks and months. We may need to do another update. Who knows how quickly? Uh, because at this point, uh, we expect that there's going to be further information that will come out. How quickly, then again, we don't know. But a one has to assume that with the 
the passage of this bill, that really lays the groundwork for a lot of things happening that could not happen until that bill passed. And, and now that has happened. So that's the story. I hope you'll look forward to whenever our next update takes place, update number 12 on the Lackawanna Cutoff. Oh,